In this module, we're going to talk about a concept called efficient market hypothesis. And the two questions that we seek to address is whether or not the market is efficient. And the second is why is market efficiency important? Why do we care whether or not the market is efficient? So one of the assumptions of the efficient market hypothesis is that stock markets, the price for stocks in equilibrium should be fairly priced. So what do we mean by fair? We said that the stock price is fair if the return is consistent with the risk of the stock. Um, and in addition to that, so this is the first requirement that the price and the return is consistent with the risk of the stock. The second is that the price of the stock reflects all available information. And it is, um, again, we saw that information is in quote, because information as a term can refer to so much. And so what we want to do is to, in order to understand the concept, we want to be more clear in what do we mean by information. So there are three categories of efficiency. One is consider weak form efficiency and the information for well the information set we allow to use is historic market information. Historic market information include past stock prices. So market here is stock market. So this include past stock price and past trading volume. So we say, did the current price take into account historic trends in the price of the stock and also the trading volume? The next set of information that we consider is um, a larger set. So in addition to historic information, we also take into account publicly available information. And publicly available information includes anything that's available to the public. And this is important. Public here does not necessarily mean free. This may include information that you can obtain legally, but you may have to pay for it. Uh, a good example would be analyst report. So publicly available information includes financial disclosure, financial statements, annual reports that are required to, uh, the SEC required to file, any press releases, any um, um, news articles about a company, uh, as well as um, analyst report, uh, research report. So all these are considered public information. So this information is a second information set. If the stock market satisfy this second information set, meaning that the price of the stock reflects all this publicly available information, then we consider the market to be semi-strong form efficient. And the last information set is all available information. This includes public or private information. So if the stock market satisfy the last condition that we said that the market is uh, exhibits strong form efficiency. So we, what, are, what do we expect to happen if these conditions are satisfied? So remember that this, is, this, this information or these conditions may or may not be satisfied, but it's important for us to understand what will happen if they were. Because remember, one of the important questions we ask is, why, why do we care about market efficiency? The reason we care is because if the market is truly efficient, then you should not be able to earn abnormal return using available information. And abnormal here is defined very specifically. Abnormal means that you should not earn a return greater than what is consistent with the risk of the stock. Efficient market does not mean that you cannot earn a positive return but it simply means that the return should be consistent with the risk of the stock. And the, other, and the reason why efficient uh, market is important is because if the market is not efficient, then information is not incorporated into stock price. So the, the, uh, in a capitalist society, we let market do the resource allocation meaning that the company that, ha that is the most um, valuable to investors 
they should have the highest stock price. A company that is not generating value to investors should have a lower stock price. And that will only happen if the stock price review reflects the available information. So if the stock price do not reflect available information, then um, the, mar the market is not the best way to allocate our resources. So let's, let, let's take a look at each of those forms in a little bit more detail. So the weak form efficiency says that current stock price reflects all past market information. So past market information include stock price and trading volume. Uh, one of the implications is that simple technical analysis is not would, does not lead to abnormal return. So you cannot use those strategy to help you help you earn abnormal return. In the past, evidence has shown that the markets are generally weak form efficient. However, with the advance of technology, this is now being challenged again because. Um, with the advance of technology, technical analysis um, has been replaced by machine learning algorithm. And the machine learning algorithm trading strategies operate at a much higher time frequency than old technical traders. So instead of looking at daily returns to determine where there are patterns that can be exploited, um, the Latest computer technology allow analysts to look at patterns on a trade by trade basis and can execute trades in microseconds and, and nanoseconds. So that is a new form of trading and a new form of information that um, we are still actually currently doing research on to see whether or not the stock market is still weak form efficient when information, past market information is mesh, is, is included the trading volume and price changes on a much higher frequency basis. The second form of market efficiency is semi-strong form efficiency. In this information set, it includes all publicly available information. So this will include annual reports and again, uh, proprietary uh, paid information such as analyst report. Uh, if, this, if this hypothesis is correct, that means if you do fundamental analysis, meaning you compute financial ratios and you look at market, um, um, market analysis, industry analysis, um, those will not earn abnormal return. Empirical evidence for strong form efficiency is mixed. So that means that we cannot claim that the market is semi-strong form efficient. So, which means that the price do not ref always reflect all available information. And um, that the good news of that is if you're a financial analyst, you have an opportunity to earn abnormal return. The bad news is that if the market is not semi-strong form efficient, then it's not a very good resource allocation mechanism, meaning that um, to more uh, money may be, may be invested in companies that are not the most valuable to the society. So it's a mixed blessing. So the good news is stock analysts can earn abnormal return. The bad news is that the market is not efficient and therefore society does not benefit um, as much as it could. If the market is efficient, then society can benefit more. And strong form efficiency says that prices reflect all information, including public and private information that should not be available to outsiders. Uh, empirical evidence indicate, indicate that markets are not strong form efficient. Um, of course, having private information will allow you to earn abnormal return, but insider trading is illegal. So again, that is um, it, the reason why insider trading is illegal is to protect investor so that um, they don't, uh, insiders do not have a competitive advantage compa um, and therefore um, will reduce investors' confidence in the stock market. So this is a necessary um, inefficiency that, that is created that cannot be overcome because if insider can trade using that insider information, um, then this creates a dynamic. And it, let's, let me use a clear example. Let's say a company is 
looking at um, developing a new product. So let's say this is a drug company. They have a new cancer curing drug. If they, if this drug is successful and can really cure cancer, obviously it will be very valuable and the stock price of the company will go up. But until the drug has gone through the patent process and gone through FDA approval, the company will not want to disclose too much details about the drug because once it discloses the chemical makeup of the drug, then a competitor can just take the formula and create their own drug. So the insiders of the, of, the drug company, of the drug company will have an incentive to keep those information private until they have obtained the patent and get approval from the FDA. In the meantime, investors do not know this information. So if the company, ha the insiders has information knowing about the drug, but they would not want to disclose that information because once they disclose the information before they get the patent, competitors is going to um, take advantage of them. So during this time period, the insider has information that outside investors don't, and the insider can buy up the stocks at a relatively cheaper price than outside investor. And that would drive away outside investors because they would not want to compete with um, company officials that has insider information. So it, it is important to make it illegal so that um, investors will be will be have confidence in the market. So how does um, academic researcher determine if the market is efficient? Well, they develop experiments to test different hypotheses. And this is one very common experiment that they conduct. This experiment is designed to test whether or not the market is semi-strong form efficient. So remember that a market is semi-strong form efficient if the stock price incorporate, or, uh, incorporate publicly available information. So the way they design the experiment is they track a stock and the stock has um, released important information on a date. So this is the date that the information is re released, so day zero. Uh, let's say this is a positive news. Um, this is the date that the company's um, drug patent get approved and the, and the FDA approved the new drug. And the company announced that to the public. So this is a great news. So on this day when the company um, announce the news, uh, we'll expect the market to take that information into account and the price of the, box, of the stock is going to go up. So the experimenter look at how does the market react. The hypothesis is that the market is efficient. So if the market is efficient, then what should happen is as soon as the news is released, on the day that the news is released, the stock price will go, will jump. And that's what the efficient market hypothesis predicts. And if this is what the experimenter observe, they will conclude that the market is sufficient. However, if what they observe is not this, they can, there are two different ways that the market could have reacted. In one way, one of the ways is that the market received the news and the news come, come out. Uh, the stock price, instead of jumping right to the new level, the stock price kind of change slowly over time and it takes them a few days in order to reach the new level. So that's considered a delay reaction. It doesn't move right away. Another, another alternative is that the stock may, re, may overreact, meaning that on the day that they receive the news, the price jump up, but it actually jump way up and then the market realized, oh, Maybe the stock is not worth that much and the price eventually settled down to the long-term price. So either case, either an overreaction or a delay reaction are both evidence that the stock is not, uh, the stock market is not semi-strong form efficient. So um, this is how an experimenter, a researcher will look at a news announcement and how the stock's price react to that news announcement and draw the conclusion. So what makes market efficient? So they said that we want market to be efficient because if an efficient market is good for the economy and good for society as a whole, when a market is efficient, 
then you allocate resources where is the most where is most value by society so in order for a market to be efficient it needs to be well regulated so regulation actually helps market efficiency so regulated regulation is not bad it's not always bad in fact in fact regulations are absolutely necessary to have an efficient market uh, the other is easily accessible, meaning that a large number of investors can participate, meaning buy and sell stocks and bonds as necessary in the market. Um, having a lot of investors is important. And also we need investor to do research so that the value, the price of the stock is consistent with its risk and consistent with the information available to them. So if there are a large number of stocks doing uh, investors doing research and those investors have access to the market and the market is well, well regulated, meaning that these investors know that if they do the work and they buy the stock, they will not be um, they will be treated fairly. So there's no insider information. There's no special favor um, that everybody can access the market and invest on a level playing field that will help the market to be more um, efficient. In fact, if investors stop doing research, stop, stop doing research on stock and, we, and they stop participating in the market, then the market will not be efficient. There are a number of misconceptions about efficient market hypothesis. So I want to iterate and emphasize those. So first of all, if the market is efficient, you can make money. So you can still make money, but it just means that you are able to make the return that you earn is consistent with the risk that you take. And more also important is that we call this the, the um, efficient market rule. An efficient market does not mean that you cannot lose money. So efficient market doesn't mean you cannot make money. It means you can make money, but it also means that you cannot, you can lose money. Uh, so you can make the wrong choice if you don't diversify. If in a, any given year, if you don't invest in the long term, all those are conditions that you can lose money. All the efficient markets hypothesis suggests is if the market is efficient, is a good it is a very useful tool to allocate resources for the society and investor on average in the long run will earn a return that is consistent with the risk that they take so this concludes the efficient market hypothesis